The Battle of Angchem was a battle fought between two factions of the royal family in the Ethiopian Empire. The battle was fought to determine who would rule the empire, Empress Zudichu or King Tafari Makonin. The Battle of Angchem is memorable because the pro Zudichu forces were not openly supported by Empress Zudichu. The battle is also memorable for the use of both psychological warfare and aerial warfare by the pro Tafari forces. Background. On 27 October 1928, 32 years old Ras Tafari Makonnen, the future Emperor Haile Selassie I, was crowned king. He was crowned by Empress Zudachu. Since 1916, during Tafari's minority, Zudachu had been regent. As regent, she exercised the real power in Ethiopia. The crowning of Tafari as king caused him to begin exercising power at the expense of Zudachu. His crowning also caused two factions to develop within the royal court. One faction was pro-Tafari and one faction was pro-Zudachu. The husband of Zudachu, 53-year-old Ras Gugzavela, imagined a future where Zudachu remained empress and he himself would be proclaimed emperor. He was clearly the leader of the pro-Zudachu faction. Within a month of Teferi being crowned king, the Rayo Oromo revolted in Wolo province. As king and with the tacit approval of the empress, Negus Tafari called for the governors of several neighboring provinces to suppress the Oromo revolt. Ras Sayam Mongasha from Aksum in western Tigra, Ras Gugsharaya Selassie from Makala in eastern Tigra, Dejazmi Shailubiru from Semyon, and Ras Gugsavela from Begemda were called upon. Gugsavela and others were unhappy with the rise of Negus Tafari. As a result, the response to Tafari's call was less than enthusiastic. Efforts to suppress the Oromo were dissipated in palace intrigue, and the revolt continued. A trusted cousin of Tafari, Ras Imiu Haile Selassie, was made Shum of Wolo in an effort to end the revolt. In addition to not being happy with the rise of Tafari, Gugzavela tried to rally traditional Ethiopia to his side in support of his wife, the Empress. In the opinion of this faction, Tafari was too young, too modern, and it was rumored that he had even secretly converted to Roman Catholicism. Gugzavela wrote letters to the leaders of Tigra and Gojam seeking support for his revolt. He wrote to Ras Sayam Mongashar and Ras Gugzaraya Selassie of Tigra and to Ras Halu Tekel Haymanot of Gojam. All three initially appeared supportive, but, after reconsideration, none responded to the letters from Gugzavela and all three provincial leaders failed to join him. On the other hand, the rebelling Oromo did agree to join forces. Battle. Negus Tafari Makonnen called the Chitet, the traditional mustering of the provincial levies. Ostensibly he was raising an army to finally crush the ongoing revolt in Wolo. At the time, Ras Gugzavela was not in open revolt and Empress Zudachu was still pleading with him not to go into open revolt. In the end, as part of the government, the Empress was in the strange position of being formally on the same side as King Tafari and being against her husband who was rebelling on her behalf. The response to the Chitet, like the initial call to suppress the revolt in Wolo, was less than enthusiastic initially. The newly appointed Minister of War, Ras Molujati Yegazu, was only able to raise the Mahel's ferry with 16,000 men pledged to it. Worse, by January 1930, Molujati Yegazu found himself with only 2,000 men as he gathered in Desi. Worse yet, Gugzavela was now in open revolt and he had already gathered an army in Deborah Tabor of 35,000 utterly devoted men. He was able to do this even without the forces from Tigra and Gojam. On 24 February, Empress Sudachu and King Tafari issued the Imperial Proclamation of Yakutit. The proclamation declared that Ras Gugzavela was a rebel. 
the anathema was addressed to all monasteries of Begemda. It concluded, and therefore, you may follow Rasgugzavela, you may attach yourself to him, be cursed and excommunicated, your life and your flesh are outcasts from Christian society. The devotion of many of the men following Rasgugzavela was shaken by the proclamation and its attached anathema. In mid-March Ras Moluja to march the Mahals ferry from Desi to Deborah Tabor to face the rebellious Gugzavela. With him were five cannon, seven machine guns, and something entirely new for Ethiopian warfare, aircraft. Psychological warfare on 28 March 1930, when Gugza Wells' army crossed the border of Begemda province moving towards Shoa province, it was met with an unusual sight. Three Ethiopian government biplanes flew overhead. In 1922, Rastafari McConnon had first shown interest in military aircraft and, by 1929, a small Ethiopian air arm was under development and was now used for the first time. The biplanes dropped numerous copies of two specially created leaflets onto the advancing army. One leaflet bore a message from the newly arrived Abunakiri Lowe's. The message from Kiri Lowe's was that anyone who fought against the government forces would be excommunicated. A second leaflet was from King Tafari and Empress Yudachu and it declared Gugzavela to be a rebel. In an example of psychological warfare, the leaflets appealed to the known conservative and religious sympathies of the forces fighting for Gugzavela. Some of his army started to desert him. Biplanes and the plains of Anchem on 31 March, both armies met at Deborah Zebert on the plains of Anchem. At 9 a.m., the biplanes once again appeared, but this time bombs and not leaflets were dropped upon Gugza Wells' army. At this point in Ethiopian history, aerial warfare was still quite novel, unprecedented, and totally unexpected. More of his army deserted Gugzavela. The imperial army arrayed against Gugzavela included Fitoreri Wandos and Kata in the center, Kegnaz Mishailubiru on the right, and Fitoreri Fikramariam on the left. Fitoreri Wandos and Castle was the eldest son of Ras Kassa Haile Dodge. Kegnazma Shailubiru commanded the troops from Semyon, and Fitoreri Fikramariam commanded the troops from Wolo. In reserve were forces under Ras Molujati Yegazu and Ajazmish Adafrasor Yenardo. According to Time magazine, by the time of battle, the two opposing armies were a mismatch. Gugzavela and his army of Bigemda numbered approximately 10,000 men and were armed with 10 machine guns and two cannons. Opposing them was a much better equipped army of approximately 20,000 men loyal to the central government. Battle began and, after four hours, the imperial forces under Fitoreri Wandos and Kassa in Kegnaz Mishailubiru gained the upper hand. With the tide turning, Ras Gugza Wells' shaken army started to desert him in large numbers. Coup de grace shortly after midday, Ras Gugzavela was surrounded and isolated. It was at this time that the coup de grace was delivered. Gugzavela was called upon to surrender. Mounted on a white charger, he chose to fight on, was shot several times, and was killed. Fitoreri Shumai, the second in command of the army of Begemda, fought on until he was captured later in the afternoon. What little was left of the army then completely disintegrated. Gugza Wells' Oromo allies never showed up during the battle. Instead, they arrived a day later. The Jasmish Biru walled Gabriel and the army of Sidamo province entered Deborah Tabor unopposed. With the death of Gugzavela and the destruction of his army, the rebellion was ended. Aftermath Gonda, the capital of Begemda province, was taken without resistance soon after the Battle of Anchem ended. As a result, Wandos and Kassa was made the Shum of Begemda province. Within three days of the death of Gugzavela, Empress Zudichu was dead of natural causes. On 2 November 1930, about eight months after the passing of Zudachu, Negus Tafari Makonnen was proclaimed Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia.